Okay, so now let's move to an introduction about dynamic games. Okay, as we mentioned, this means players make decisions、uh, one by one. So we will mainly focus on the solution process for dynamic games, which is called backward induction. We're going to tell you how to use backward induction to solve dynamic games. Let's recall a game about choosing B or S, B or S. We mentioned to you that there are two Nash equilibria in this game when they play this game、uh, statically. However, if they make decisions sequentially rather than simultaneously, will things be different? Well, let's try to analyze it. So we want to know what will they do in equilibrium. How will their payoffs change, and is there any difference to become the leader or the follower? So now we need to specify the timing for this game. Let's assume player one makes the decision first, and then player two makes her decision or his decision. Now instead of a matrix, we probably should use a tree to describe this game. Okay. The first node or the 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 root labels as is labeled as one. That means player one is to choose between B or S, and then at an internal node here, like here, player two observed that player one chose、um, B, and then player two makes the decision about B or S. Okay, one important fact here is that. When player two makes the decision, player two has observed player one's decision, okay, and then player two makes the decision. So what's really important is not the time for them to make decisions; it's about whether they know the other one's decision, okay. It is possible that we play a game that player one makes the decision today, player two makes the decision tomorrow, but. They don't know whether the other one has made the decision. If that's the case, then it's actually a static game. Okay, what's important is whether you know the other one has made the decision, or whether you know the other one's decision. Here we assume player two observes player one's decision. Okay, and then after both of them have chosen a decision, the outcome will be realized. In this case, player one gets two, player two gets one, or in this case, they get zero and zero, and so on and so on. So the game is played from the root to leaves. If they choose B and S, then get zero zero. That's the idea. So, uh, now we want to find their optimal strategies. So we ask, how should player one move? If you are player one. The thing you want to do is to predict how player two will respond to your decision, right? Because you are the leader of this game. So once you make your decision, player two sees it, and then player two will optimally respond to your decision. So we first treat ourselves as player two, and then try to see what should player two do. So if player two is here. Okay, if player two has observed that player one chose B, player two will also choose B, right? Because one is greater than zero. But if player two has observed S, player two will choose S, right? Because two is greater than zero. So now we can see B for B or S for S is player two's best response. Okay, just like in a static game. In a dynamic game, we may also find a player's best response to the other players. Now, player one can make her decision, right? If player one choose B, eventually player one will get two. If player one choose S, eventually he will get one. So, player one will choose B, of course, because two is greater than one. All right. So now we have solved this game, because we can say that an equilibrium outcome is a path goes from the root to a leaf. So in equilibrium, these two guys will play B B as their equilibrium. 
Okay, that's the idea. So let's make some comparisons. When they play this game, uh, in a, when they play the game simultaneously, there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria. But when we choose player one to be the leader, and then they play this game dynamically, we will only get one equilibrium outcome, BB. Okay, mm, this is not very surprising because the game rule has been changed, so the outcome has been changed. That's possible, right? So their equilibrium behaviors change. Okay, in general, this is not always the case. You may find a game such that no matter it is static or dynamic, the result is the same. Okay, so changing the game rule does not require to change the outcome. Also, here, being the leader is a good thing, right? Because now you may verify, player 1 gets 2, but player 2 only gets 1. So being the leader is beneficial. Is it always the case? Well, let's see the other example. Consider the, the, the game H and T. Okay, and here, let's solve this game. Previously, there is no Nash equilibrium, but now, when player 2 is making her decision, 1 is better than negative 1. So player 2 will choose T. And then if player 2 observes T, he will choose H. Right? Because 1 is greater than negative 1. So then player 1 will think, um, if I choose H, I get negative 1. If I choose T, uh, I also get negative 1. So in this case, player 1 feels that it doesn't matter. So, in this case, we have two possible equilibrium outcome, HT or TH. They are two possible outcomes. And then, being the leader is actually hurt. Uh, it's actually a bad thing, right? Just like when you play a uh, scissor, paper, stone. If you are the leader, then you are going to be, lo be, lose, be losing the game. So, this example tells us it's not always the good thing to be a leader. Okay, this happens in all kinds of dynamic games. So let's make a conclusion. In the previous two examples, there is a leader and there is a follower. Before the leader really makes her decision, the leader should anticipate what the follower will do. Right? This is how the leader makes the decision. So. In this case, we can solve this game by first making analysis on the second stage. In general, if there are multiple stages, we should try to analyze those problems from the last stage. We solve the last stage problem, and then we can take that as the input to solve the second last stage, and so on and so on. In general, we move backwards until the first stage problem is solved. And then we try to find an equilibrium path from the root to a leaf node, okay? So that we may characterize what they will do in equilibrium. This solution concept is called backward induction, and that's going to be the main weapon, the main strategy we use to solve dynamic games. Thank you.